Yes, welcome to lecture two, and this is Assistant Reproductive Technologies. This lecture two will be talking about hormones that are within the reproductive system, both the male and the female. We shall be talking about the estrus cycle, then we shall talk about puberty. Hormones that are involved within the reproductive cycle include you have the gonadotrophin releasing hormone, and so is produced within the hypothalamus. Remember, hypothalamus is the master gland. Then you have the follicle-stimulating hormone, and this one is produced within the anterior pituitary gland. Then we have the luteinizing hormone, and this one is also produced within the anterior pituitary gland. We have estradiol, which is sometimes called estrogen, sometimes called E2, and this is produced within the ovary. We have the progesterone, and it's produced by the corpus luteum, which is common as the yellow body. We have the prostaglandins, and these are produced by the uterus within the uterine body. Then we have the inhibin, and the inhibin is also produced within the ovary. We have the testosterone, and the testosterone is produced in the tests mainly by the sertoli cells, whereby here we shall see that in production of testosterone, we have the phlogostomating hormone promoting the production of spermatogenesis within the sertoli cells. <coughs> then we, the tenazine hormone, for it what it does, it stimulates the production of testosterone within the, the lighting cells. These are the hormones, the abbreviations and the, the roles they play within the estrus cycle, as you shall see. The first hormone is the phlogostomating hormone, and this phlogostomating hormone it does it stimulates the development of the follicle and it's also abbreviated as FSH. We have the second hormone is luteinizing hormone and this is always abbreviated as LH. Luteinizing hormone plays various roles. For example, it stimulates, it stimulates continuous growth of the follicles, then it stimulates, it plays a role during ovulation. Yeah, by the surge of luteinizing hormone, it results into ovulation of the ovulatory dominant follicle. We have the progesterone. Progesterone is abbreviated as P4 and it's the hormone of pregnancy. If the cow was served either by natural or artificial nation and it conceived, progesterone will always, will always prevent the female from, from coming back to this transfer of reality again. It prevents production of FSH and the LH, meaning there will be no more cases of ovulation. We have estrogen, which is the E2. And is produced from the ovary. It plays a big role. For example, one of the role of estrogen is that it is responsible for the sexual behaviors that are shown during estrus. When the cow is hit, when the cow is on heat, the signs that we see are mainly because of estradiol. We have what we call the gonadotrophin releasing hormone, and this one is produced within the hypothalamus, which is the master gland in the brain. The GNA rate does it reduces the production of these gonadotropin hormones. GNRH reduces production of FSH and luteinizing hormone. Then you have the prostaglandins, we always term it as PG F2 alpha. And this one, what it does, it mainly plays a role in regulation of the corpus luteum. For example, if the cow did not conceive and within our menstrual cycle during day 17, the progesterone levels will decrease because this prostaglandin will go and cause regression of the corpus luteum, which we call as luteolysis. For example, for you to understand the estrus cycle, you must understand the hormones that are involved. For example, FSH, LH, GnRH, P4, P PG2 alpha, we have E2, you must understand all those hormones, the roles they play, and then you can, it can be easily for you to understand estrus cycle. Within the hypothalamus, this is where the GnRH is produced and as it has been produced, the GnRH stimulates or reduces the production of the gonadotrophin hormones, for example, the FSH and the luteinizing hormone within the anterior pituitary gland. So we shall see that this anterior pituitary gland, it's an endocrine gland because it produces its glands just directly within the bloodstream. Why we say that exocrine glands, for them they use through ducts, for example, the pancreatic duct, 
where by the bound cases produce. Those are an example of the exo glands. But for this case, we are looking at the endo glands because we are releasing hormones directly to the bloodstream. This is what we call the hypothalamus digital glandular axis. Within the hypothalamus, like here, we shall see the main hormone that is produced is the gonadotrophin releasing hormone, which is the GNRH. Then we have the antidepitalic gland, and within the antidepitalic gland, we have two hormones that are produced. We have the luteinizing hormone and the phosphorylating hormone. The luteinizing hormone helps the development of the corpus luteum, and the luteinizing hormone helps in ovulation. The phosphorylating hormone helps in development, stimulates the development of the follicle. Then we have it, the follicle here it produces estrogen, which is this sometimes called estradiol, and this estrogen plays. It can either be a negative feedback or a positive feedback. When the levels of estrogen are low, it plays a negative feedback and it goes to the anterior gland, trying to block the production of luteinizing hormone because the luteinizing hormone will be supporting the growth of the corpus luteum. So, if the levels of estrogen are low, it tries now to block the production of LH. But as the levels of estrogen increases in blood, it now plays a positive feedback whereby it goes to the hypothalamus and Causes the release of stimulates the release of gonadotrophin releasing hormone. Other hormones that are produced from the follicle we have inhibin and inhibin what it does try to inhibit, inhibit the antidepressant gland from producing the follicle suit hormone and the hormone. That's what it may be when the animal conceived. Then we have the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is the yellow body. Once the animal ovulates, the main part, which is the follicular cells, they develop into they develop into retire cells and into the production of the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum only has a role of producing progesterone, and progesterone is our hormone of pregnancy. This is like the diagrammatic illustration of the hypothalamus vitale gonadal axis, whereby we have the brain, and within the brain, we have the hypothalamus, which is the master gland producing the GNRH. Then we have our anterior and posterior gland. For this case, we are dealing with the anterior pituitary gland, whereby it produces this gonadotropin, which is the phagosomitic hormone and the antitrizing hormone. This one reacts on the ovary and brings various effects. We have the corpus luteum, which is produced from the, from the after the ovulation, the luteum is being produced. Then we have here our interests, we have the uterine body. If the animal is not pregnant by the 17, in the extra cycle, we shall have our foster gland is being produced, and this one they play negative feedback, whereby it will go and cause the regression of the corpus luteum. This is the same way you can see. You have the bones, the orbital, then you have the ovary surrounding. For example, you have the anterior vein, uterine artery, where those hormones are passed. This is the uterus cycle, but somehow here it's somehow complicated, and you shall have to go into details by the end of this lecture, and then you shall have understood this hormones and how this increase and decrease come about. We shall have to talk about the follicular waves because during the stress cycle we have follicular follicles developing in a web-like development and these follicles are mainly just within the pro and estrus stage because the estrus cycle has four stages as you shall see. The word estrus cycle it means the period between two estrus and the estrus is a period where the female is sexually receptive, it's willing to mate. And the estrus cycle varies, for example, in humans, it's always 28, but in animals, like cattle or cow, it is 21 days. Then we have estrus has four stages. The first one is pro estrus, we have estrus, metastrus, and astrus. And within these various stages, we have various hormones. For example, we can divide this. Stages in two phases, whereby you have two phases. You have the follicular phase, whereby the development of follicles. Then you have the retire phase, whereby you have more progesterone being produced. Pro estrus and estrus are mainly within the follicular phase. Then metastrus and diastrus are mainly within the retire phase. Estrus, you define it as a period when the female is sexually receptive. There are various signs of heat. Like we always see, we have sorry, vulva, we have vaginal discharge, we have bellowing, we have tail, tail we have to be shaked, raised continuously. But the only the only conclusive sign that we see in estrus is 
a cow or animal allow you to stand and others mount it. That one is a, a clear sign or a conclusive sign that this animal is on heat. But this one interprets mainly in cows, because in goats we don't see such like an animal like animal, animals mounting others. No, we can't see that. In bits, for it is clear, you can apply what you call the back pressure test. And when you view the handler, when you press the back of the pig of the saw, which is on the heat, it will stand. But when you press, when you apply pressure on its back and it moves, it's not on the heat. We have like sheep. Sheep, the female one is called an iwi, and it's difficult to take the heat within the iwi because, because of the anatomy of the tail, because the tail covers the vulva. And the vulva is always small, so you can't see the signs like some vulva, then the mucus is always there. But in presence of the ram, it's easy because an ear which is on heat, it always go next to the ram for mating. We have what we call, we have some animals which are induced breeders, and you have the spontaneous breeders. Induced breeders for them, their heat is in presence of some seasons, either they light. Show the lights along the lights. For example, we have camels, we have rabbits, and we have cats. Those are indeed the fall under induced. What is spontaneous for them? It occurs, it's just a cycle, it occurs spontaneous. For example, we have cows. Then we have seasonal breeders. For example, sheep. Sheep are seasonal breeders. Then we have then we have we have, we have seasonal breeders. These are I talked about them. We have goats and sheep. The induced ones, they are mainly because of the sexual behavior by the nerves will be sent and the ovulation or heat period will occur because of the induced, they are induced by certain sexual behavior, for example, in cats and rabbits and then camels. For goats, as solo breeders, except the savannah, the savannah breed for them, they are not solo breeders, they are spontaneous, they are always spontaneous. Then we have what you call the polyistrus and the monoistrus. For example, a dog is a monoistrus, for them they always have one cycle. Then the cows, for them they are polyistrus. Polyistrus means they undergo those cycles, many cycles within a year. We need to understand the istrus cycle because of two reasons. Once you understand the istrus cycle, then you will have higher, concep higher conceptual rates at your farm. Then the reproductive efficiency will improve. During estrus, we have two phases: the follicular phase and then the luteal phase. During follicular phase, we have the proestrus and estrus. Then in the luteal phase, we have the metastrus and then the diastrus. In the luteal phase, we are having more P4, which is a progesterone. This concentration is high. We shall see that during estrus cycle, we have what we call the follicular phase, and in the follicular phase, follicles will grow. For example, you have Follicles within the pool being recruited, after they have been recruited, they will grow. When they grow, some will die, while others will still continue growing. Those ones that die, they undergo atresia, and we call them atretic follicles. While those which grow, we call them the dominant follicle. But depending on the levels of progesterone within that cycle, the dominant follicle may either ovulate or it will also die. For example, if the polyesterol levels are high, then that follicle will not develop, it will have to die. But when the polyesterol levels decrease, then that follicle will grow and it will ovulate. There are always two to three waves of these follicles within one estrus in cattle. During the delta phase, the polyesterol levels, which is the P4, is always high, then estrogen is low. This is an illustration of these follicles whereby we have, for example, here we have in this graph, this is the progest this is progesterone. And we see that from the pool, these follicles are recruited, but they are trying to grow. So we have some undergoing atresia until we have one dominant follicle. But because the progesterone levels are high, this follicle still dies. And as we approach, we are seeing that the atletic follicles they die, then we shall still recruit others. And this I'm sure will be recruited by luck that now it's the 17 and there's no pregnancy. The progesterone levels decrease. As the progesterone levels decrease, then this dominant follicle can develop and this one can be overrated by the event one. 
we have what we are saying that here the tonizing hormone this is what we call the tonizing hormone surge as tonizing hormone decreases but increases in concentration around day 21 then which is the same as our day zero then we shall have ovulation by day one because the tonizing hormone causes the rupture of the dominant follicle releasing the egg this is our cycle this is just cycle in cow it takes 21 days 21 days and day zero this is the day when the cow is on heat, which we call as estrus. And at day zero here, we shall see those various signs of heat. For example, bellowing, we shall see mount, a cow trying to mount others, starting to be mounted, swollen vulva, just within day zero. Then after day zero, day zero is estrus. Then now we go to our, from day one to day five, it's what we call the metastrus. And in day one, we shall have ovulation because after the cow has been in its trust, 24 hours to 32 hours, the cow will ovulate. And this is at day one, the cow will ovulate. And as the cow ovulates, the follicle, the follicle tissue where the egg was, will develop into corpus luteum, whereby those cells, what which we call the dead cell, will form the corpus luteum. And by day five, the corpus luteum will have developed. And the corpus luteum, as the corpus luteum develops, progesterone levels, which is the P4, will increase. Then, that will be our metastrus, then diastrus. From metastrus, we go to diastrus. Diastrus is run from day 6 to day 16. And by day 10, the size of the corpus luteum will be, will have increased, and the levels of progesterone will be produced will be high. Then by day 15, there's what we call maternal cognition, whereby the uterus will, if present with the embryo, we can recognize, it, the mother can recognize that. Consume, but in up, if the embryo is absent, then the cow will go back to another heat by how by the 17 the uterus will try to produce the prostaglandins, which will now react to the corpus luteum, which we call the creation of corpus luteum, and the production of estrogen product, and production of progesterone will decrease. As the production of progesterone decreases, the cow now can the estrogen levels now increase and this will result to the GnRH stimulating the anterior abdominal gland producing the FSH and then another follicle will follow which we expect it to operate by the by the one soon this is the estrus cycle that during day zero is what we are calling as estrus or the same as standing heat then at day one the zone we shall see our operation like here we have one egg but it has ovulated. This is the day one. As, it, as the egg cells are ovulated, the remaining part here forms the corpus luteum, which is the low body that produces progesterone. <coughs> then at day nine to day ten, the corpus luteum would have developed fully and high levels of progesterone will be produced. At day sixteen and eighteen, we shall have maternal cognition, and in the absence of pregnancy, corpus luteum will decrease, meaning to be destructive. But in the presence, corpus luteum will persist. For example, here we have our uterine, and there is no pregnancy. There was no pregnancy by that time. Prostaglandins is well produced and will react to the dead corpus, which is this our yellow body. This is the cycle. We have seen that in proestrus, from proestrus you go to estrus, metastrus, and diastrus. Here it is when the cow is on heat, we shall see signs, and here we shall have the surge of the tonizing hormone that will cause ovulation, and after 24 hours, Within the metastrus now, a cow will ovulate. Within estrus, we shall see those behaviors of heat. The, when the cow is on heat, we shall see them within the estrus. Then the metastrus is now we shall see our cow is ovulated. Then just now the corpus luteum developing. When the cow when the corpus luteum develops, progesterone levels will be produced. Then we go to the diastrus, and the diastrus shall have by the six to the seventeen. Shall have now the corpus luteum has developed, and in the presence of progesterone, in the presence of pregnancy, the corpus luteum will persist. But in the absence of pregnancy, shall, at the end, we shall have the progesterone level decreasing. Then, now estrogen can increase, and then the follicular sweating hormone can continue. That's how the cycle is. These two, estrus and progesterone, are in the follicular phase, then metastrus and 
diasporas are within what we call the delta phase. This is an example of the cycle, the stress cycle. We are seeing like here is the stress whereby the cow is on heat. This is a day one, day 21, or day zero. The cow is on heat, you shall see those signs. Then on day one, there will be ovulation. Here is that this is an ovum which was released due to the ruptured follicle. As it ruptures, copper sutum will follow from those cells where the egg was. Then from there, mature copper. During 15 for 5 to 15 days, copper sutum will be will have developed fully, then progesterone will have been produced. Then in the absence of pregnancy, there will be regression of the copper sutum. This is a cycle, but the graph can show. As you say, you define the stress cycle as a pair between two estrus, for example, like here, between two estrus. Here, you must be knowing the role of each hormone, for example, what estrogen does, what LH does, what the we see that. As the LH, which is the rising hormone, the size as it increases, the cow will ovulate. As the cow ovulates immediately, at day, day one, then we shall have progesterone levels now increasing because the course of is developing. This is what we are seeing here. That the progesterone will increase because the course of is developing. But as the corpus, as progesterone is increasing, the photosynthetic hormone will now decrease because this one blocks the production of F, SH and LH, which is one decreasing because this one tries to block the arterial gland from producing these two hormones. Then, by day 16, and if there is no pregnancy, we shall see that now the progesterone levels decrease because of this increase in the PGF2 alpha. This is the prostaglandins which have been produced by the uterine body. As this one will now destroy or destruct or cause luteolysis, which means the regression of the copper sutium, the position levels will decrease. And as the position levels decrease, the estrogen levels, this is the blue line, this is estrogen levels will increase immediately. And now estrogen goes to the hypothalamus and shows the production of the GnRH, which will now cause the production of the LH and FSH. That's why we see now the transit hormone and the phagocytic hormone increasing as the P, as the position level is decreased. Then here now the cow, the, another fall can develop which will be ovulated again by the 21. That's all about this stress cycle. However, you must know each hormone, what it does, increasing one hormone affects the other hormone. That's all about the cycle. Remember, it's repeated or continuous in absence of pregnancy. This is like if in case there is pregnancy, then the, the, the progesterone will block the hypothalamus from, from, producing, from producing the GnRH, meaning there will be no production of FSH and neutralizing hormone within the anterior gland. So we see that within the estrus here, within the uterus, we shall have now the embryo. The embryo will block the uterus from producing the prostate glandings, meaning the copper sutium will persist and progesterone levels will continue to be produced in high levels for this one they maintain pregnancy. That's all for today. All about the estrus cycle. Remember, we have what we said we termed as puberty. Puberty is a stage, is a period when until a female animal reaches its first estrus cycle. Because now we have seen the cycle, so we can understand what's the puberty. The period when an animal takes to receive its seed. First cycle is what we call puberty, and it varies within various animals. For example, in cats, always at 12, and then we have an animal at 15, we shall have to produce by 24 months. Remember, cattle takes two, 83 days to produce, but this is always a range. It can start from 275 to 285, but the day is that the cattle takes 285. There are various factors that affect puberty. That affect an animal to reach its puberty. For example, nutrition. Animals which are poorly fed, they will always take longer to attain puberty. We have diseases, we have breeds. These local breeds take long to reach puberty. That's all. We shall find others, other knowledge we shall still continue sharing knowledge about animal sciences. What you have to do, just subscribe to the channel and you will always receive the notes knowledge about animal sciences. We meet next lecture three.